Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to start creating our mat in uh, side of Photoshop. Um, so what I've done here is I've basically just opened up the TIFF file that we've uh, rendered out from um, uh, from Maya. Uh, and we want to use this as a guide now for for actually producing our mat. Um, now, uh, what we want to do is, in order for us to be able to kind of, um, uh, what we want to be able to do is see these lines through our mat. So what we want to do is have, we want to be producing the mat on layers below this, and then just see the lines on top of it. So what we're going to do is set this layer, or set this to multiply, okay? Uh, the blend mode to multiply okay and I'll come back to that and just demonstrate and, and sort of talk you through what's happening there in a moment okay now what I want to do is um, let's bring in some elements uh, let's bring in a simple element here and just show you how to kind of align that so if I go into my photos I'm gonna go into uh, wall and just bring in this picture of the wall here so I'm just gonna drag that in here okay now it's a raw image so it will ask me to kind of, if I want to correct the white balance or do anything with it, I'm going to accept it as it is. Okay. And what I want to do is actually really, what I'd like to put on a layer below, but that it hasn't actually done that for me. But what I can do is obviously initially kind of put this as the sort of size this. Now when I initially size it, what I want to do is I want to avoid, um, I want to try and avoid doing any, uh, let's have a look. So, I want to avoid um, um, uh, 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 changing the aspect ratio of the image because obviously that's going to start distorting things. So I don't want to do this. And when I move this, obviously I want to hold shift so it maintains the actual um, uh, the correct aspect ratio. Okay. So I'm going to use that as a starting point and just sort of click enter to place the image in there. Uh, now, if I move this image below, what you'll see is you'll see that the template goes over the top and what this multiply technique does is basically multiply the color of this by the color of whatever's below it okay so um, uh, and obviously you know the 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 areas that are white are effectively become see-through because white equals one if you multiply anything by one it keeps the same value so the white areas effectively become see-through and then the pink areas are simply just multiplying these bits by whatever the pink area is okay so it's just a, a way of sort of creating an overlay I think if you have something that's absolutely black so you can see in these black areas it doesn't work quite as well uh, but for most of it it works perfectly fine so what we want to do then is um, we want to kind of place this image in our scene and what we want to try and do is, is use sorry uh, we don't want to use what you might want to do is actually lock this layer uh, uh, so that it can't be moved um, there are lock position so that we can't actually move that layer okay and then what you want to do is uh, move you want to manipulate these uh, elements but you want to try and manipulate them in a non-destructive way okay so for example what we want to do is um, uh, yeah I'm going to go and use the distort tool okay so transform where are we transform and I'm going to use a uh, distort okay and what I want to do is uh, I think I just want to use I just want to use these edges here uh, I, I find if you use the middle bits you get much better results than trying to use these outer edges it, it, it starts to create kind of confusing perspective there so to make it fit we're going to use the distort tool okay uh, now I can't actually see this edge so a good a good if you can use control minus and control plus to zoom your image in okay and then what I'm going to do is just let's just in fact actually I've done the very thing I said don't do I think I, I think I'm okay in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to escape that and I'm going to just do the distort again uh, edit transform Ooh. here we go distort okay so again just gonna move this so it kind of fits and then move this end to make it kind of fit I think it needs to be a bit a touch bigger that's not far off now here we go
So a bit of noodling and we kind of get to where we need to get to. There we go. So I, I'm going to have. I'm, I'm going. I'm obviously, I could spend a lot more time placing this, but I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. And so what you want to do is try and place it using a kind of non-destructive approach. Okay. Um, and and at the moment, it's treating this as a smart image, and that's fine. Uh, and that's nice because it keeps a link to the original image. However, at some point, we want to rasterize this so that we can then actually start applying a mask to it, because I believe we can't really mask this layer. Uh, layer mask, uh, reveal all. Oh, maybe we can. Okay. So what I want to do is my next step is I don't want this entire photograph on my map. The only bit I want is where the wall is. Okay. So I'm just going to use my polygon selection tool and I'm going to just zoom in a bit here. Okay. And I'm just going to create a rough selection. Again, you could do this. I'm just going to do it roughly for the for the for the purposes of this demonstration, but. We'll just grab that here, come back to here. In fact, actually, I really want it there. I might just adjust what I'm doing in a moment. Okay, and there we go. Okay, and then what I want to do is create a mask. So rather than rather than what I could do is invert this selection and then delete everything. But then that's destructive. It means I haven't got those bits in case I want it later. You know, I might want to expand this wall up here. I might want to kind of you know make some adjustments, put in put in part of this pavement if I wanted to. So a good approach is just to create a mask. So again, it, you're not actually destroy, destroying the image in any way. You're just using a mask. Okay. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to just go. Uh, uh, I'm just going to go reveal. Uh, sorry, I want to go reveal selection. Okay. So I've now created a mask, and that's revealing our selection here. And then, obviously, what I'd like to do is kind of create use use some uh, uh, clone and patch techniques to kind of cover these areas if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, that I might just try that out. So. Again, what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to select an area to clone. So I'm going to take this area. Uh, in fact, what I might do, I'll just backspace that. I'm going to take this area here, and you can see I'm trying to sort of copy the kind of uh, uh, the kind of shape of the bricks here. When I'm doing my selection, I'm just going to go Control C, Control V. And that wasn't quite what I wanted. Uh, that's because I actually got my mask selected here. So I want to make sure my picture's selected. Control C, Control V. And then what I can do is obviously just move this uh, and, and use it to kind of create a patch. And I just need to kind of scale this up. So I'm just going to use the truck. If I go Control T, that allows me to do a, a transform on here. So I'm going to go. And zoom this up, so hopefully it will sort of start fitting this size here. You can see that we're kind of creating a patch here. What I might want to do as well is, is on my selection, what I've done is on the uh, with the polygon tool selected. If I just select my polygon tool again, so I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to escape this move for the moment with my polygon tool selected. Notice I had feather set to two. And it's good to just feather things a little bit. If you do do a selection and, and you haven't feathered it, you can easily just, uh, before you actually copy and paste your selection, just go into Select and just go into Modify. Uh, in fact, I'll just do a selection now just to show you. If I select a square, for example, I could go Select, Modify, and then I could feather it there and just feather it to there as well. So it's good to feather your selections before moving it. Now, just going to go back to doing this transform here. Uh, let's just, I want to remove this selection now. Okay. Uh, let's control T to do a transform. And all I want to do ooh, is. Hopefully, copy this so it kind of fits the same size. So we're scaling it up, and it should be kind of the same angle. 
and it should kind of work as a patch that we can then use on this bit of wall here okay again just going to scale this up okay you could do a much better job of kind of painting this in and integrating this and making this work and, and filling up this patch. So you can make a patch there and fill that up. Another approach you could do is simply using the clone tool. So if I go and select the original wall here uh, uh, and I could use a clone tool. So I'm just going to go and uh, let's go Alt. Hang on. I've got the clone tool selected here. I think that's correct. Yeah, so uh, what I need to do is select an area to clone from first. And what I tend to do is kind of select an area. If I'm dealing with a kind of a grid type thing here, what I tend to do is kind of select an area. Uh, so I'm going to select uh, an edge on the line here. And then if I... Hang on, hopefully. Is that not part of my image? Select this layer. If I select part of the line here and then what I can do is if I continue painting from the line what should happen is it should kind of fit uh, as we go and, and paint across and, and fill our area here as well I'm going to do the same thing with this again I'm going to select this painting here and select a line there and then if I continue from this line ah yes it's not letting me do this because I haven't actually rasterized this layer. So in order to actually do this clone thing, I'm at the point where I need to rasterize this layer. Uh, and you can do that by going layer. Uh, where are we? Rasterize. Uh, now it won't let me rasterize. Hang on. So in fact, what's actually already happened is the option that I selected when I did my clone stamp actually rasterized it, uh, actually converted this from a smart layer to a, a smart object to a normal rasterized layer anyway. Um, so I think that that kind of worked. Again, I'll just go through that process. I was, I was trying to sort of click on it. Uh, yeah, it rasterized the layer anyway. So. Uh, obviously that will allow me then I can just then kind of paint again my textures and continue painting like this as well so one way of kind of filling in areas of your map is by taking patches and by doing clones so you often end up with sort of several objects kind of making up your your area the other thing that you might want to do is actually uh, apply some kind of color adjustment and then what you might want to do is apply a color adjustment to you know if, if all these elements are affecting our, our part of the wall so we've got our uh, patch here for our wall uh, and then we've got our, um, and that's that bit of clone that we've done there as well. Okay, so these elements that make up our wall, what we might want to do is actually um, uh, uh, do some kind of color adjustment to it, to it. And we want to affect both of these layers. Okay, so what we might, and we want to do it in a non-destructive way as well, because if we if we start applying baking those color adjustments in then we start adjusting and then we want to do further adjustments later it's just going to gradually destroy the images so we want to do it non-destructively so Photoshop allows us to do this by having what we call adjustment layers so if I go layer and I go new adjustment layer and let's do curves that's my favorite kind of color adjustment tool so here's my curves and what I can do is kind of make adjustments to my image here okay and and make adjustments there now what I'm going to do is just demonstrate something here so if I just bring in another uh, image Let's just bring in, uh, I'm just going to bring in a, let's just bring in this picture here. Click OK. Okay, so this is another part. Let's imagine this is another part of my mat, and I'm going to put this all roughly where the building is at the back there. Okay, let's ima imagine this is all, all roughly where this building is. I can zoom this up. Here we go. Okay. So I'm just going to position it there just for argument's sake. Um, and uh, I'm going to position it below my, um, I want to put it below my wall okay now what will happen is if I go into my adjustments layer so, so to access the adjustments this is my adjustment layer here double click on it and I can kind of start making adjustments but notice it's making adjustments to both the wall and 
and this image as well okay and we don't want that okay so it's adjusting everything below it so actually what we can do is we can actually put a mask on there in fact you can see it's already got a mask there it's just that everything's in the mask so you, the white area is the bit affected and the black area is the area that isn't so because it's all white the whole image is being affected but you've got, you can actually apply a mask and tell it where you want it to, to, to actually apply that adjustment. Now, we've already got a mask. We've got one here. So all we need to do is go Alt and drag that to there and click Yes, Replace Mask Layer. And now what you'll see is if I go to that color adjustment, you'll see that it's only affecting just that wall. Okay? So that's how we can kind of integrate things together. So using those sort of techniques, those non-destructive techniques that I've shown you, what we can then do is put all these elements together here. So I've put all these elements to here, using this wireframe as a guide to kind of help us kind of make those adjustments. One thing I would mention is when you're dealing with things like you've got this wall here, which is kind of one di which is like one surface. Sometimes what you might want to do is where you've got something that's kind of two surfaces, like this building here. So I think that's this layer here. Yes, OK. Um, what you might want to do is do a transformation on only part of the image. So let's imagine you want to do the distort transformation. You want to just distort this side, this part of the image here, this edge of the building to fit this edge, and then do a separate distort for this side of the building to fit this edge of the wireframe. That's not a problem. All you've got to do is simply grab so, hang on. Select the, the, the part of the image you want to distort, which is in this case is this bit here. Um, uh, select that part, and then what you want to do is if you then do your uh, edit image transform and then go distort, you'll see that we're able to distort this part of the building, okay? without affecting the rest of the building. So if you're, if you're trying to align things, it might be you just want to select one part of it and distort it, uh, and, and Photoshop will allow you to do that. Okay. So this is our kind of initial mat uh, that we're going to use. Um, and and uh, the next session, we're going to project this onto our model. The one thing I would say as well, just before we go, is, is you want to keep your Photoshop file organized. You probably want to do it a lot better than what I've done here, but you can see that I've labeled things here like bridge. So I've got the bridge here. Hang on, I just want to enter that. I've got the bridge here, okay? Uh, I've got the road. So labeling things up and grouping things is very useful. And obviously this bridge here is actually made up of lots and lots of patches as well. Uh, and all of those are inside that group. Again, the wall has got patches on it. OK, um, uh, and various things I'm doing there. Uh, so I get rid of that. So it kind of groups things together as well. So grouping and naming and organizing things is very important. Otherwise, you will get lost with what the mat's doing, especially if you're doing other work and coming back to this sometime later.